Welcome to part three and the mildly disappointing conclusion of the Saab half-engine rebuild two-barrel carb conversion project thingy. This part by far took me the longest because, as you will see, the Saab had a lot of trouble holding liquids and uh, I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. The sponsor of today's video is Tight Reach Extension Wrenches. More information on this and a giveaway later on in the video. And without further ado, I'm going to fade off into the project intro sequence. At the end of part two, I just got the engine running for the first time, but it wasn't running properly because I found out later. Yeah, it will not run without being choked. 100%. Through testing with the world's most dangerous vacuum leak tester, I found the source of my car running like hot garbage. Very hot garbage. There's a very large vacuum leak, and I'm, I'm sure you'll be surprised to learn that it's in my carburetor base plate. Listen to that, I can kill the engine. Almost kill the engine. And this is not upsetting. When, when I make anything from scratch, especially anything with this little build quality, I expect to have problems. The only thing that upsets me about this is the knowledge that I'm gonna have to take off the carburetor again using those incredibly difficult to access carburetor nuts. And that, that thought is slightly upsetting. So what I'm gonna have to do is take the carburetor off and either fix or make a new carburetor base plate because this one is ripe with vacuum leaks. <laughs> it wouldn't even run unless I choke it all the way. All right, I've taken the base plate and the carburetor off of the car to see if I can't diagnose this vacuum leak. After much carb cleaner spraying, I know that the vacuum leak which end am I on? I know that the vacuum leak is over in this area, the area where I've smeared a bunch of uh, RTV to see if I can't remedy while it was on the car. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't. So I know it's over in this area. Oh, there we go. Yep, that's the theory confirmed right there. If you can see all the areas I have silicone, there's an entire area missing right here. That's because I put a bead of silicone down right along here and uh, that kind of went inside of this other hole. So it didn't even contact the upper base plate, the upper half of the base plate, which means that is highly likely where my vacuum leak was caused from is this little area right here. So I suspect if I re-silicone the whole thing, put it back together, put it on the car, I will not have a vacuum leak anymore. Pick this out of here like you're picking a nose. Like scraping out rubbery snot. Kind of unpleasant. And I've marked out where the top hole is here so I can avoid that ring and actually have the two halves seal against each other. There. Now if I put the two halves together and screw them up all tight, it'll work. Probably. I don't make any guarantees of anything. And off we go to install it. Down goes the carburetor. Now I really should wait overnight for the silicone in the base of the carburetor to harden, but I just can't wait that long. So I'm gonna try it now with the door open, letting all the bugs in. It's running significantly worse than it was before. All right, let's use the patented flammable vacuum leak checker. Nothing, no difference whatsoever on the previous trouble spot. Seems to be doing all right. It's still choked all the way. See, see if I can de-choke it a bit. De-choking now. Oh, 
obviously it's running much much worse i feel like there's still a vacuum leak somewhere or or the other possibility is i don't have enough fuel to it so here's the situation i have now fixed all the vacuum links as far as i'm aware i even plugged the vacuum lines on the carburetor base plate and uh, there appear to be no vacuum leaks whatsoever i also checked the fuel delivery system and the fuel pumps work so well that they pumped a bunch of gas under the ground without me realizing it. So that works fine. But despite all of this, the carburetor will not run unless it is fully choked. So what I'm going to do now is I don't have any carburetor skills, so I'm just going to start poking around in the carburetor and see if I can see anything obviously wrong with it. Like, I don't know, the previous owner of this carburetor replaced the float with a wine cork or something. Just to see if I see anything that immediately looks wrong and probably use my vacuum line checker fluid to clean out the carburetor, otherwise known as carb cleaner. Ew. So I didn't know anything about this carburetor before I got it, but I should have figured because the choke wasn't hooked up on it that it wasn't new. And sure enough, there is all kinds of schmoo floating around in there. I mean, seriously, this is full of crap. And dirt in the carburetor could lead to a clogged fuel jet, which would be the cause of my fuel starvation issue. Here is the carburetor that I'm going to clean. And so I don't get carb cleaner all over my workbench, here's a baking pan. It's not like I ever do cook for other people, but if I were to cook for other people, I'm sure they would expect the food to taste in some way like car anyway, so it's fine that I can use this baking pan. Besides, it's mine, I can do what I want. As I mentioned earlier, it's a shame I didn't do a pre-op inspection of this carburetor to find all the dirt inside of here. It would have saved me some trouble now, but it's irrelevant because now it's off and I'm cleaning it. I hope this accelerator pump is fine because I don't have a replacement. Ginger lay. Oh God, there's shreds of stuff in here. That doesn't look good. It's not a new part, that's for sure. It is dry and cracking. I just made a trip to a couple of different auto parts stores and surprise, surprise, none of them had a carburetor rebuild kit in stock for this thing. So, or even in their system whatsoever. So I'm just going to have to take care, special care to not damage any of the gaskets as I'm cleaning this thing out. And then I'll have to order a new rebuild kit for it later and put it in at a later date. One, two... Three. All right, the carburetor's all washed up and cleaned up. Now I'm going to reinstall it back onto the car. All right, the carburetor is cleaned, put back together, and put on the car. Now let's start the engine and see if that cleaning did any good at all or if I just wasted my time and got some gunk out of there. Well, let's see if the engine runs any better now that the carburetor is complete. Okay. It's cold, that's for sure. I'll save you the confused pondering dialogue. No, the carburetor cleaning appears to have made no difference at all to the engine running. It still doesn't idle and will not run properly without being at least somewhat choked. But despite this, I had a car show that I'd entered the Saab into in just a couple of days, which is why the hood's in place, and I was dying to see how the car performed on the road. The choke is a so, let's take it on a test drive. Commencing pre-completion test drive. In a second. Aside from the lack of idle, it feels like it's running correctly. Up into third, taking it gingerly before it's warmed up. <laughs> I'm driving my Saab again. Oh, it's been like eight months or something. This is exciting. <laughs> oh man, here I am riding in a car with a different engine that I put in there, I tore down. Oh, I feel so accomplished right now. 
going to have feet, keep feathering the throttle with the edge of my foot. Yeah, I'm like a Harley rider. Can't stop revving it at a stoplight. All right, entering the highway now. Now to second. Well, right, let's tap into that secondary, shall we? Listen to that! It doesn't actually feel all that fast, but I don't care. Listen to it. <laughs> That's great. I don't feel any noticeable power gains, but then again, the carburetor isn't set up properly, so I've got a rebuild kit coming in the mail, and when I put that in, that's when I'll do the real judgments. It's just a preliminary test drive. A fun preliminary test drive. Not. It's de-choked completely now. And still running, so that's a good sign, I guess. That's kind of pathetic, actually. If I choke it a little bit, it picks up. That doesn't make any sense. Is it running too lean? Maybe you need bigger jets or something. It picks up more speed as I choke it more. That's, that's backwards. That doesn't make any sense. With the test drive complete, but not entirely successful, I then trailered the car to the St. Louis European Auto Show. All right, I'm back from the car show now where I won nothing. This is from last year. And I have two tasks to do now. One, I have my carburetor rebuild kit so I can obviously rebuild my carburetor. Now, I'm not sure this will fix all my issues, but it will almost certainly fix my idling issue. The other issue is that it feels like it's running a little bit too lean, which may possibly mean I need new jetting to enrich in the fuel a little bit. All right, here is the top and bottom halves of my Weber 32 slash 36 DG something and my carburetor rebuild kit. I guess might as well just get started on it. I'm actually going to start on the top here. There we go. Good Lord, that was on there. choke plate is going aside for now. And yes, I took time to properly adjust the float level. Let's take out this little idle mixture screw here and give that a spritz because the idle is not right on this car. Oh yeah, that's gross. <laughs> it's covered in dirt, the needle is. Now one, two, three, and then ignore it until I put it back into the car. Aha! This is jammed up with gunk, and that is going to be a solution to a problem I'm having. This tiny hole here has crap in it, and that will 100% explain my chunky idle. That was the idle jet, in case you were wondering. Time to, for the, yeah, I don't know, sixth time, reinstallate this back onto the car. Now it's time to put the alternator back, put the face back onto the car, and see if my newly rebuilt and degunkified carburetor idles properly. Assuming I didn't mess up anything, let's see how well it runs now. I have to pump up some fuel to the carburetor. Oh, that's running. Oh, it didn't run when I de-choked it. That's not a good sign. Oh, that's real cold. <laughs> it needs to warm up quite a bit before I can set the idle. It's still, it honestly still feels like there is a vacuum leak in it, but I don't know where that vacuum leak would be because I've checked all the avenues I can. Oh, for God's sake! I hate everything. While the coolant is still leaking quite vigorously out of the car, I'm going to put the car up on the lift 
and try to see from underneath where the coolant is leaking from. See if I can't see where from. Oh! That's from the side of the oil pan. Basically what's happening here is I'm not sure exactly where the leak is coming from, so I'm redoing everything. This is how I program as well. Where's the bug coming from? I don't know, rewrite the whole thing. Since I don't know what else the problem may be, I'm going to attack this, take the whole water pump off. I might as well. I'm in here, which means accessing all of these incredibly hard to access water pump bolts. Ah, daggum, my ratchet extension is too extendy. This is going to take a very long time. And I keep dropping this stupid bit. This has got to be one of the slowest ways to possibly remove a bolt I have ever done. This is why when I went to replace the water pump about seven months ago, I decided, oh, you know what? It'd be a lot easier with the engine out of the car. And I was right. This was a million times easier with the engine not being held in place by the tyranny of the car's engine bay. And here I am undoing a bolt, quarter turn at a time. Oh, oh, bolt number five, and the whole back half, the water pump. All right, let's look at this and see if there's any immediately obvious signs of leakage, and there aren't. There isn't. It's nothing. So, hmm. Well, that doesn't help me out to figure out why it was leaking from back there at all. I guess really the only thing to do is to pretend it's leaking everywhere and seal it up more than necessary. Pop the front half off, even though I'm pretty sure it wasn't leaking. I'm not going to take any chances whatsoever. And I'm going to seal this. Good Lord, come off it. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, I had the water pump, two halves of it off of the engine. I gave this half of it a nice spruce up with the wire brush on this side to make sure all the mating surfaces are as smooth as possible. I did the same with the fittings. I undid this fitting, I wire brushed it, and I redid it with some new Teflon tape in there. And I left this untouched because it's a brand new part and there was nothing wrong with it. Now, I don't know where this was leaking from whatsoever. And when I took it off, I left it sit and the gaskets are all dried out and pretty much useless now. And I don't even know if it was leaking from the gaskets in the first place. So I'm going to take evasive action that may be either ill-advised or risky. I don't know. I'm going to replace these gaskets entirely with RTV. There will be no gasket material holding this uh, water pump together. This is obviously the wrong half. So we'll see how that goes. Worst case scenario, it leaks again. I have to take it off the engine and get some new gaskets. How hard could that be? It's only a pain to get this thing out of here. Front half goes on first. You can see I have a nice evenish bead of RTV, and that goes on like so. I think the worst part about this water pump design is that the bolts are accessed from the back. You know you're not working with enough space if this is how you're installing a bolt. Face reinstallation time. A good thing to do at this point would be to test the water system, fill it up with coolant, and see if it still has any leaks. And that would involve starting up the engine, running it for a little bit, and seeing if anything comes out onto the floor. But I'm not going to do that right now because of two reasons. One, I want to give that coolant, or the, the RTV, every chance possible to harden up and to cure. And two, I want to start working on this carburetor now. I still have carburetor tuning issues, and I have two solutions for it that I will show you in one second. But first, I have to get it off of the car. Again, for the 500th time. Here's the carburetor out of the car once again. Now, I was planning to just give up and have a shop figure out my lean condition, why the carburetor is running too lean. But I called four shops, and they all told me no in various different ways. However, one of these shops gave me some advice. They told me cleaning out the carb with carb cleaner simply wasn't enough. I need to take the carb apart 
and give the whole thing a deep soak in hot water to properly clear out all of the passages. So that's what I'm going to do with this ultrasonic parts cleaner that I bought specifically for this task. Hopefully it cleans out all of the gunk in my carburetor and my engine will run properly. I also ordered this. This is a jetting kit I ordered for my Weber carburetor in the event I had to tune it or re-jet it at all, but disregard it entirely because I never had to touch it. All right, let's take this super hot piece of metal out of here and hit it with a bunch of compressed air. Clean out all the canals. That's a terrible noise. I bet you anything after I get this carburetor reassembled, it still won't run correctly. I bet there's something else causing my lean condition that I can't figure out because I'm a simpleton and not a car mechanic. Now it's ready to reinstallate onto the car, but first I need to add coolant and see if it leaks at all, which is oh, a task I'm dreading. All right, here goes nothing. Please don't leak, please don't leak, please don't leak, please don't leak, please don't leak. Please. I don't know what the sob god's name is, probably Bjorn, but if you can hear me, seal up all the water holes. Oh no. Oh no, I saw a drip. Legitimately. Where? It's leaking on the water pump again. I think I'm gonna cry. All right, where are you leaking this time, Mr. Water Pump? There's definitely a pull up of water around the bottom exit of the water pump. And that's pretty much all I can see. All right, I have to be completely honest with you for a moment here. I don't wanna work on this car anymore. And this is for two reasons. One is this reappearing coolant leak that is so, so hard to work on. Not to mention it's so hard to find out where the coolant is leaking from. And the second reason is probably the most prominent. It's summer, it's Missouri, my shop has very poor insulation. It's basically a convection oven in here. When the sun's out, it just cooks. It's 90 degrees in here right now, and it's late evening on a not particularly hot day. Yesterday, it was a hot day, and it was 110 inside the shop. Wasn't that hot outside, but it was 110 in here and all I have to keep myself cool in here is that wimpy little fan over there that you may be able to hear. It's just, it just makes me not want to come out here, which is why these projects take so, it's just been taking a lot longer than I would have imagined. In May, got through this record time. June, slowed down. It's July now, I hate being out here. So, it's, it's not always joy when it comes to these projects. I just wanted to convey that across. Also, if part three, this is part three, I think, if part three comes out late, now you know why. Because it's just, I've lost the will. So anyway, I forgot to mention my plans here. I'm going to order a proper water pump gasket for this. Wait till that arrives and install it. Apparently RTV didn't do the trick. If the new water pump gasket I put in here is also leaking, I'm just going to cry, I think. I think that's a reasonable course of action. When my new gaskets arrived, I reinstalled the water pump, this time with a skim coat of RTV on both sides of each gasket for better sealing. It's time to play everyone's favorite game, car intestine untangler. All right, I'm not going to be an idiot this time. Before I put the alternator and faceplate back, I'm going to fill up the radiator, see if it holds coolant, which so far it hasn't properly. Maybe it'll work this time. Who knows? I don't have any faith at this point. It's only leaked like three times before. <laughs> oh, whatever. I can hope for the best. I am legitimately nervous about this. I don't see anything yet, but, you know, I just put like half a can of coolant in there, so anything can happen beyond this point. Anything. I don't see any leaking thus far. Let's go with the second bottle of coulant. Oh my God, I do see something. And you know where I see it this time? It's actually extremely obvious. All right, stick the camera right below where it's leaking. Cause it is leaking. Did, did I mention that? It's leaking again. Put my phone right below that. Maybe I'll be able to see it this time. I have a very, very strong suspicion where it's leaking from. Yep, that's where it's leaking. 
So, surprise, surprise, I have another coolant leak, but this time it's from the water pump. As a matter of fact, I think it was from the water pump last time before I swapped out the gasket. I think it was actually just leaking from the water pump. But whatever, lesson learned, it's leaking from, on the water pump that's on there, it's leaking from the weep hole right here, which as I understand it is designed so that if the water pump seal fails, the coolant will come out of this weep hole instead of going on to destroy the bearings that are over here. At least I think. Doesn't matter. That's where it's leaking. So now I'm going to have to replace the brand new water pump that I bought off eBay to reduce my risk of coolant leaks with this unknown water pump that I took off the engine in the first place. Things are great, you know? The old water pump is back in place. All the hoses are connected to it. And now it's time for everyone's favorite activity. See where the coolant leaks from this time. Okay, here's the deal. It is leaking coolant, obviously. Why wouldn't it? This time it's leaking coolant from the weep hole on the water pump. Again, this water pump is shot. That seal is no good and it's leaking out at quite a substantial rate. So what I have to do now, since this was my only spare water pump, the other one is known to be bad, I have to order a new water pump and hope that the new one I order this time will be good. It's been several weeks, but my new water pump finally arrived and hopefully this new one won't leak straight from the factory. But before I put it on here and find out whether or not it leaks, I need to take the old one off. And this is a perfect time to introduce today's video sponsor, Tight Reach Extension Wrenches, makers of, you guessed it, extension wrenches. Now the reason they are a sponsor in today's video is because this water pump, there are two bolts on the back of it that are incredibly, incredibly hard to get to. Now I can get the ratchet down in there to access these two nearly impossible to access bolts, but once I get it jammed down in there, I only have just the faintest amount of movement back and forth and taking bolts out when you have this much movement takes a long time. In fact, it took me an hour. So I went scouring on the internet for a better solution and what I found was this tight reach extension wrench. With this wrench extender, I can stick the sockety bit down there into the nook and cranny and ratchet up here remotely and it's chain driven down to the socket and I have full range of movement on my ratchet and it is just, it transformed my one hour long ordeal of removing two incredibly hard to access bolts into just a simple two minute long task. And that's why they're today's video sponsor because I reached out to them because that improved this job substantially, especially since I've taken on and off this water pump more times than most people have even seen a Saab 96. So now that they're today's video sponsor, that means I can also do a giveaway. So go down in the video description, you'll find a link to the entry form and giveaway details, and I'll be giving away one 3 8 inch pro extension wrench and a low profile socket set from Tight Reach. Anyway, with that on, on to removing this thing with my tool. There we go. It leaks. It's no good to me. Here's the two water pump halves. Now, obviously, I can't reuse this gasket, and I could not find a new gasket when I looked. So, I'm going to have to make some new ones, which means cue, badly out of place, musical montage. With my new gaskets made, it's time to reinstallate the water pump. Now, something I learned that I did earlier that was incorrect was when I cleaned the surfaces of the, the timing cover here and the water pumps, I used a wire brush. And that was a bad idea because this is aluminum. These parts are aluminum. And I created micro gouges into it with the wire brush. And that's why when I first installed the water pump, it leaked past the gasket, 
without using RTV. So what I do to fix this issue is use a skim coat of RTV over the gasket on each side of the gasket that will fill those micro gouges that I created and I'll have a tight seal with my gasket. So let's get to that. Another new thing I got is this new lower radiator hose because this, this old one is kind of bad. I should have replaced it a long time ago, frankly. Also, this was like 40 bucks. And that's it, it's all in, hose-wise, anyway. Now that the new water pump and coolant lines are all in, it's time to do the scary thing. Will it hold water? Mixed with coolant, obviously. I don't wanna to come to a conclusion before I've run the engine, but I don't see a single drip or leak or any sign of coolant not being properly contained into the system. With no visible signs of leakage, I think it's time to reassemble the rest of the alternator and the face and everything. And then the carburetor. Now that the engine is all back together, it's time to start the engine again and see if I really did fix the coolant leak this time. Hopefully I did. Also, because I gave the carburetor a hot ultrasonic bath, maybe I fixed it in some way, shape, or form. We'll see once I get the car running. But I have to apologize in advance for the lighting because it's about to go to pieces. I have to push the car partway out the door so I don't die of fume inhalation. Give it a couple pumps of the old gas pedal choke out because that's the only way it would start previously. Wow, I had to choke in to get it to run that time. Okay, it's at about half choke. Give it a little bit of throttle. Let's choke it in just a tiny bit. All the way choked in. That is a good sign. That is an excellent sign right there. There is no choke applied to this engine and it's still running, which is something it could not do before. I'm ecstatic by this. Ah, oh, I don't even, I'm not even using the English language properly. That's how excited I am. All right, everything looks good so far. The smoke was from, from that. The smoke was from some coolant leaking off the exhaust. Oh man. Let's see if I can idle it down now. Oh yeah. It's idling. Let's try to idle it down a little more. <laughs> this is utterly fantastic. This is a result. Now I'm even more disappointed to give the news that I'm about to give you. I've been on this project so long, I've been working on this project so long that the license has expired and I can't drive it on the road anymore, which is really disappointing. Of course, I also had that little uh, blinker mishap during a towing incident when I was dragging it between buildings. So uh, yeah, I can't do a test drive right now. So that's really disappointing. It's running well, and it's holding all of its coolant in. I guess the celebratory test drive will have to come later. So I'm sorry. Well, I told you it was going to be a mildly disappointing conclusion to the project series, didn't I? Well, at least it idles properly and it holds coolant. That much is almost entirely certain. I'll have to see how it behaves when I'm able to give it a proper road test again. I either have to take it to get a safety inspection and get the license renewed, or I could just get classic vehicle plates on it and forego the whole safety inspection altogether. That stuff will come later, as well as a whole suite of minor little things I want to do to the car 
off camera, like replace the missing gas cap, clean it. I want to repaint the hood over there because it looks nasty and it, it was never meant to be a permanent paint job to begin with. But anyway, all of those things will be in an update video much later on, probably in a month or two. And I'd like to extend a sincere thank you for this entire project series to my patrons, my loyal supporters, and the sponsor of today's video, which is Tight Reach Extension Wrenches. And as a reminder, this tool right here is available for giveaway, as well as this low profile socket set. The, the uh, links to the giveaway entry form are down in the video description. And until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. I've got a two barrel sob now. <laughs>